A, a very good morning to all of you. And uh, on behalf of Nano Junior College and uh, IIT Academy, I welcome you all to this webinar today. My name is Srinivas. I am one of the directors of uh, Nano Junior College and IIT Academy. Um, why have we organized this seminar today? Let me just give a brief background. For most middle class parents, the biggest gift that we can give to our children is the gift of education. Therefore, when our children come to the 10th class and they are on the verge of completing the 10th class, we are all anxious as to whether we are doing the right thing for our children. Are we putting them in the right course? Are we putting them in the right track? Are their career aspirations the right, are they in the right direction? Are we putting them in the right college and institution? So these are some of the questions which will plague the mind of any parent at this stage. And I know that because I was, I am a parent myself and I went through this experience twice, first for my son and then for my daughter. And in both cases, I would say that I was relatively successful. My son has graduated from IIT Madras. My son, my daughter has graduated from NIT Warangal. So I know the feelings that parents go through at this stage. So whatever I share with you today will be from the parents' perspective, the anxiety is the, I will be providing answers to the questions that most of you will be having. So what is it that I'm going to do in the next 30, 35 minutes? What I'm going to do is if your chosen option is engineering, I'm going to look at what are the top engineering colleges in the country, what are the uh, number of seats there, what is the competition, what is the selection process, what is it that you should be doing in the next two years to get into the top-notch engineering colleges. So that is primarily my focus. After that, I'll spend a few minutes in terms of explaining our approach to this two years IIT plus intermediate coaching. And then I will take questions from you. So without further ado, let me start off with uh, what we have in store for you today. Um, when it comes to top-notch engineering colleges, we have to talk about the IITs, the Indian Institutes of Technology. Totally, there are 23 IITs in the country today. And out of this, I would roughly say there are three generations of IITs. The first generation started uh, between 1951 and 1961, the oldest being at Kharagpur. We have Kharagpur, Bombay, Madras, Kanpur, and Delhi. The one at uh, Mumbai is called IIT Bombay. The name of the city has changed, but the name of the IIT has not changed. Similarly, IIT Madras is at Chennai, Kanpur and Delhi. These are the first generation IITs. After a long gap, IIT Gohati got started in 1994. Then IIT Roorkee got started in 2001. Actually, College of Engineering Roorkee got the status of uh, IIT in 2001. So this, I would say, roughly are the older IITs. Then we have... Uh, the second and third generation IITs, which are they? Started in 2008, Bhuvaneshwar, Gandhinagar, and Hyderabad, our very own Hyderabad, Indore, Ropar, and all of these things were started in, all of these IITs were started in 2008. 2014 onwards, the third generation of IITs, Palakkad, Tirupati, Bilai, Goa, Jammu, Dharwat, all of them got started. During this time, Two other reputed institutions also got the status of IIT. One is the Banaras Hindu University at Varanasi is now IIT Varanasi. Similarly, Indian School of Mines, Dhanbad is now IIT Dhanbad. So all in all, put together, we have 23 IITs, including the one in Hyderabad in Telangana and the one at Tirupati in Andhra Pradesh. Okay, next. The next, after the IITs, the next major national institutes we should talk about is National Institutes of Technology. We have in all 
31 NITs. And the NITs were set up primarily in 1959 to 67, 15 of them, 86, 87, 2, 2006, 3, 2010, 11. The oldest uh, NIT was set up at Warangal. At that time, they were called regional engineering colleges. The Warangal NIT in Telangana is the oldest NIT. And the youngest is in Andhra Pradesh at Tade Pelli Guru. So uh, between these two, totally, we have another 29 setups. So totally, we've got 31 NITs. OK. Uh, apart from IITs and NITs, cell government also runs a few other institutions. Primary among them is triple ITs. Triple ITs have gained prominence in the last few years. So the central government, so you, you need to keep in mind, we're talking about central government. The state government also runs triple ITs. Uh, for example, at Basar in uh, Telangana and Nuzuvid in uh, Andhra. But these triple ITs are after 10th class. So don't confuse those triple ITs with the triple ITs that the central government is running. The central government run triple ITs are at uh, Alabad, Gwalior, Jabalpur, Kanchipuram, and Karnul also. Okay. Then, while we are talking about centrally uh, run triple ITs, we need to also talk about the recent additions to triple ITs set up in what is called PPP mode, that is public private partnership mode, about 20 of them, including the one at Sri City in uh, Hyderabad, in, in Chittor, in Andhra Pradesh. So that is also one of the triple ITs set up as part of the 20 PPP mode triple ITs that were started. So while we're talking about triple ITs, we also need to talk about certain important triple ITs, which are in the private sector. The prominent one among them, it is not visible, the slide is not clear here, Hyderabad, Bangalore, and Delhi. All three of them have uh, gained prominence in the recent past and Hyderabad triple IT is a preferred triple IT. A lot of students, if they don't get computer science branch in say the older IITs, prefer triple IT Hyderabad. So triple IT Hyderabad has gained that kind of prominence. In fact, triple IT Hyderabad is not Indian Institute of Information Technology. It is actually International Institute of Information Technology. It is private, but uh, the entrance test for all of these things is the same. And I will discuss that with you in a short while from now. So that is about triple IT's. Next, there are other centrally funded technical institutions. The other centrally funded technical institutions include Indian Institute of Science and Technology, Tiruvananthapuram. Uh, all those interested in uh, space technology. A lot of students ask me, sir, I want to get into NASA. I want to get into ISRO. What should I be doing? If you are interested in aerospace, the most premier engineering institute that you should be looking at is Indian Institute of Space Technology, Tiruvannathapuram, run by ISRO itself. Okay. Then there is National Institute of Food Technology, Entrepreneurship and Management at in, in Gurgaon. So NIFTEM, anybody is interested in food technology, it's a premier institute for food technology. Food technology is again a very growing discipline. Then you have Indian Institute of Engineering, uh, Science and Technology at Shippur in West Bengal. Then Punjab Engineering College in Chandigarh and uh, Rajiv Gandhi Institute of Petroleum and Technology in UP. So all of these things, all of these institutions are run by the central government. So we call them centrally funded technical institutions. Then from the government run institutions, we need to move to look at the premier private institutions and prominent among them is Bits Pilani. So Bits Pilani has got three campuses, Pilani, Goa, and Hyderabad. So three campuses, Bits has got, uh, Birla Institute of Te uh, Technology and Science. And uh, the, the foremost one, the, the one that got started first was Pilani, and then Goa, and then Hyderabad. So if you see, Hyderabad is home to IIT Hyderabad, Triple IT Hyderabad, Bits Pilani Hyderabad campus, and uh, at a very short distance from Hyderabad, you have the NIT Warangal. So in and around Hyderabad, you've got four premier national institutes. Okay, so that's about bits. 
Now, other than BITS, you've got a whole lot of other private deemed universities, which include VIT Velour, that is Velour Institute of Technology, Manipal Institute of Technology, SRM, Amrita, Dhirubhai Ambani Institute of uh, Information and Communication Technology. Mahindras have set up a, a beautiful engineering college in Hyderabad, MEC. Then uh, NU, that is NIT University, Bennett University set up by Times of India Group, Munjal University set up by the Hero Group, etc., etc. There are a whole lot of these private universities also. And that is the advantage. If you take the engineering option, the choice is wide right from IITs at the top to your state level engineering colleges, there are a wide variety of engineering colleges. So based on your preparation and based on how dedicated you are in terms of approaching the uh, two year program, you could easily get into one of these. And once you get into one of these, your career is settled. In fact, I've not even talked about the state level engineering colleges. In the state level also, there are university run colleges and there are at least 10 to 15 good private engineering colleges in both Telangana as well as Andhra Pradesh. I'm not talking about them. Uh, that is for a, a different seminar. But today our focus is on primarily national institutions. Okay. Now having done that, let us look at the competition at each of these uh, institutions. If you look at IITs, the total number of seats is around 12,000 uh, plus or minus. In fact, plus I would say uh, a few hundreds. The number of aspirants is two and a half lakhs and I'll explain to you why it is two and a half lakhs. It's, in fact, it's more than two and a half lakhs. I'll, I'll tell you why it's two and a half lakhs, why it is written two and a half lakhs. NITs, National Institutes of Technology, about 18,000 seats and uh, around 12 lakhs aspirants. So basically, for all engineering colleges in the country, the aspirant pool is around 12 lakhs. So 12 lakhs appear for the entrance test for NITs, which is also the qualifying entrance test for IITs. So in a way, the number of students who aspire to get into IITs is actually 12 lakhs. I'll explain the selection process in a little while from now. If you take BITS Pilani, the number of seats in all the three campuses put together, Pilani, Goa, and Hyderabad, all of them put together, the number of seats is around two and a half lakhs. All right, so that is uh, that, that, that should give you some kind of idea in terms of the competition. The other factor that you need to keep in mind is that in IITs and NITs, there is reservation, reservation for SC, ST, OBC. Also now, uh, EWS, that is economically weaker sections, there is a 10% quota for them. So totally all of these reservations put together, you have around 60%. So 60% would go for these reservations and 40% is for the open category. Also, uh, one good news for girls, girl students is that there is a separate quota for girls. Uh, so IITs and NITs, the quota is 20%. So what the IITs and NITs will do is, if through merit, girls get into the institute and they constitute 20%, there is no problem. If they do not constitute 20%, they will create extra seats called supernumerary seats and see that the girls there become 20%. So the 20% reservation for girls is achieved by not tinkering with the reservation for the others but by creating super numerary seats. And the last few years, we have seen a lot of girls, last three, four years, we've seen a lot of girls making use of this advantage and getting into the IITs and NITs in large numbers. So that is about the reservations at the IITs and the NITs. Okay, we'll come back to this in a short while. Uh, now, how do you get there? How do you get there? The competition for the IITs and NITs, as I told you, is uh, uh, a lot. There is a question now, actually, is there a reservation for foreign citizens? There is no reservation for foreign citizens. But sir, please uh, uh, reserve your questions till the end. We will try to answer these questions towards the end. Uh, 
there is a question the, there is an observation that i am lying a bit uh, there is a problem with zoom that's a problem with zoom a little uh, lag may be there but as long as i am audible i think it should be clear okay please reserve your questions till the end i will answer those questions okay now if you look at the entrance test the engineering entrance test season starts with an entrance test known as jee main earlier jee main was called the ai triple in 2013 the jee main got created it replaced ai triple jee main serves two purposes purpose number 1 it is the qualifying entrance test for jee advanced uh, so 12 lakh as i told you 12 lakh people take jee main every year and the top 2.5 lakhs are eligible for taking the next test which is the jee advanced now jee advanced as is given here jee advanced is the qualifying entrance test for iits but to take jee advanced you need to qualify in the jee main the second purpose of jee main is based on the entrance test performance in jee main you will get admission in nits and triple its so nits and triple its the entrance the admission is through jee main including the private triple its private triple its that is triple it hyderabad bangalore and delhi also use jee main scores now bits pilani has its own entrance test called bitsat every other deemed university also has its own entrance test for example vit has its own entrance test srm has its own entrance test etc etc so all of these uh, amrita has its own entrance test all of these private universities have their own entrance test so in fact every year after je main students get busy writing all these entrance tests every other day so in fact uh, earlier that is the pre corona days the entire month of april and part of may students used to be busy writing all of these entrance tests okay now je main and je advanced though both of them are based almost on the same syllabus which is the ncert syllabus uh, there are a lot of differences between these two tests je advanced is a two paper test that is there is a paper in the morning there is a paper in the afternoon that is number one number two is je advanced the pattern is not known though the nature of questions is slightly known based on experience it is not necessary that the paper setters will stick to those only those question types only so for example in je advanced you have multiple choice single answer right multiple choice more than one answer right you have matching types you have numerical type comprehension type a whole lot of these question patterns will be there in je advanced also the marking scheme in je advanced is also unknown so it may be plus 4 minus 2 Plus three, minus one, plus four, minus one. So the marking scheme also will change year to year. The number of questions also will change year to year. So that uncertainty element is there in JEE Advanced. In the case of JEE Main, on the other hand, everything is known. For example, there are seventy-five questions, twenty-five questions in maths, twenty-five questions in physics, twenty-five questions in chemistry. Twenty of these questions are multiple choice, single answer, right? In each of them. so the pattern is known and the marking scheme plus 4 minus 1 and je main the other uh, difference as far as je main is concerned is that till last year you could take je main twice once in january the other in april this year uh, the government has given the flexibility for the students to appear four times sir we do not know whether this will continue but most probably it will continue this year the je main is being conducted in february march april and may four times you can take one or all of them the best of the four will be considered as far as your ranks are concerned okay so that is another difference and je main is a single paper test three hour test so that is as far as je main is concerned and each of the other entrance test has its own patterns okay now uh, if you see we need to look at uh, changes in iit je over the years because we learn a lot of lessons on the basis of how the iit je has evolved over the years up to 2006 je was subjective that means you were given questions you had to solve 
and arrive at the answer. So that was till 2006. After 2006, it has moved from subjective pattern to objective pattern. The moment it has become objective in nature, the rules of the game have changed slightly. In fact, I would say radically, not just slightly. When it was subjective, if you're conceptually very strong, it was sufficient. The moment it became objective, along with concepts, along with command over concepts, you also needed to have practice because a speed element got added. And therefore, the nature of coaching, the nature of preparation has also changed. When it was subjective, about three to four hours of coaching in the morning or in the evening after college used to be sufficient. So all those institutes were providing that three to four hour of coaching either before school or after school. The moment it has become objective, it has become imperative for students to spend a lot more time for preparation. And therefore, we have come up with this integrated coaching, which has become the mainstay as far as IIT preparation is concerned in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, where students prepare from morning to evening, they would be spending their time for IIT preparation only, and all of them in the institution where coaching takes place, where the theoretical lectures take place, also practice in terms of study hours take place. So the time that the student spends in the institution has increased from four hours to nine hours, 10 hours, 11 hours, 12 hours, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that is, that is the nature of the change in the IIT necessitating a change in the preparation strategy. Then from 2013 onwards, you have all of those things which I've described today. That is a two-step process, JE main, JE advanced, et cetera, et cetera. All of them started in 2013 onwards. Okay, now while we are here, we need to keep one thing in mind. And a lot of parents ask me this question, which is, Sir, uh, what is the weightage for board exams? There's absolutely no weightage for board exams in JE main and JE advanced. So absolutely no weightage. You just have to get 75% in your board exams. If you get 75%, you're qualified, but there is no separate weightage that is given to the uh, board exams. In fact, that 75% is not there this year. It was not there last year because of the corona situation. So last year and this year, if you just passed the board exams, it is sufficient. Okay. Right. Now, uh, before we get on with this, there is, because a lot of uh, students I find are from CBSE and uh, students ask me this question. If I'm a CBSE student, what should I be doing? Should I continue with CBSE or should I move to a uh, state board. So to answer that question, let me do a comparison first. And after I do the comparison, I will tell you what is best for you. Now, if you look at the CBSE and state board, let us look at the syllabus. Syllabus CBSE is extensive, as you all know, is extensive, maths, physics, and chemistry. If you look at state, it is CBSE plus. Why is that so? Because as far as state intermediate board is concerned, Physics and chemistry textbooks are the same as the NCRT books. So Telangana and Andhra Pradesh state governments actually pay royalty to NCRT. They use the same textbooks, physics and chemistry. This started in 2013 when JE main got introduced, NEET got introduced. So one good thing that the state governments have done is to revamp the physics and chemistry syllabus. So physics and chemistry syllabus, uh, NCRT, that is CBSE, and state board, there's absolutely no difference. They are the same. In maths, the state boards have an edge because maths state board syllabus is a little higher, little tougher than the CBSE. So overall, if you see, if you look at syllabus, state board has got a slight edge. Okay. Then if you look at optionals, you have only maths, physics, chemistry in the case of intermediate. In the case of uh, CBSE, you've got one extra, that is you can take also biology. But I would say that is not the right thing to do because preparing for one entrance test itself is a, a huge effort. Now, if you combine that with biology, students will be confused, will not be able to do either well in NEET or in JEE. So better, though this option is available, I would say it's only a theoretical option. 
Okay. Now, in terms of exam standard, earlier, sometime a few years back, CBSC used to be slightly tougher, but now CBSC is as easy as state boards. There's a marks inflation, there's a grades inflation. So everybody gets tremendous amount of marks in CBSC also. So also the state. Valuation in both cases is easy, but the most important difference, that is what you have to keep in mind, is that integrated IIT coaching is not available in CBSE schools, whereas in our intermediate, it is possible. That means intermediate coaching plus intermediate preparation plus IIT coaching under the same roof. Like for example, if you take Nano, we have Nano Junior College, IIT Academy under the same roof. So we decide how much time the student prepares for IIT, how much time the student prepares for intermediate. So students roughly spend about 10 to 12 hours for IIT every day at institutes like us, like ours. But if you take CBSC, there is this lack of IIT coaching, integrated IIT coaching. So if you are in a CBSC school, you have to take IIT coaching separately, either two to three hours in the morning or two to three hours in the evening. And uh, that I would say is not the right thing to do. The two to three hours of coaching every day versus 10 to 12 hours of coaching in our kind of institution, uh, there is absolutely no comparison. So if you are serious about getting into a good engineering college, CBSE is not the right option. You have to move to the state board. In fact, other states also looking at the success. And if you ask me, one of the reasons why Telangana and other Pradesh students do so well at the IITs, at the IIT entrance test is because of the availability of integrated coaching in both the states. Looking at the success of uh, uh, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. Now, other states also have started slowly. In Tamil Nadu, we are seeing this. In Karnataka, we are seeing this. In West Bengal, we are seeing this, where there is this integrated coaching available in uh, uh, some places in these states. So, all in all, my suggestion, my advice if you are a CBSE student, if you are planning to prepare for top notch engineering colleges, you should move. And if you are in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, you should move to uh, integrated coaching with the state board. That is the reason why we get students from Tamil Nadu, we get students from Maharashtra, we get students from Karnataka, we also get students from Kerala. In fact, this year, there is a student from SM also uh, coming all the way from Guwahati to Hyderabad for making use of this facility of integrated coaching. Okay. So that is about the question whether you should continue in CBSE or not. Okay. Then this is the most important question uh, parents have. All this is nice, but is my child good enough to get into the IITs? So therefore, what it takes to get into IITs? Let me answer that question in a couple of minutes. But before I get in with that question, let me answer this question. Why should you look at IIT so seriously? We all know it is so very competitive. When it is so competitive, why should you be looking at IIT so seriously? So what is so great about IITs? Now, if I ask this question to any IIT aspirant, the first thing that he will tell me is the packages, the salary packages, because we all know we all read in newspapers the fancy packages that the IIT students get. One crore plus, 50 lakhs plus. They get into top-notch IT companies like Microsoft, Facebook, Google, etc., etc. Some other students will tell that, you know, the faculty are good. Some of the students will tell us that, you know, the facilities are good, infrastructure is good, prestige is there, brand is there. All of them is there. Now, if you ask me, as compared to all of these things, you also have to look at what makes, what differentiates an IIT and from the others. For that, we need to look at a few examples. You all know Sundar Pichai, who is the uh, CEO of Alphabet, which is the parent company of Google. If you see, Sundar Pichai started his journey from IIT Kharagpur. And today, he is head of a corporation whose annual revenue is uh, 
more than the GDP of 90% of the countries of the world. And we all know how powerful Google is. All right. All our entire daily life is dictated by Google. All right. And he is the CEO of such a powerful corporation. And where did his career start? IT Kharagpur. Arvind Kejriwal, totally different area in politics. He comes from a very ordinary non-political family. But he created a political party on his own and became the chief minister of uh, Delhi, not once, but twice. If you see his career, where did it start? IIT Kharagpur again. He, after IIT Kharagpur, he got into civil services, resigned from civil services. Then we know uh, his entire history. Then if you look at Raghuram Rajan, for example, another person in a totally different area in economics, who is the governor of Reserve Bank of India. Okay, he started his career uh, as an electrical engineer, passing out of IIT Delhi, and then he did his MBA from IIM Ahmedabad. I had the good fortune of uh, studying along with Raghuram Rajan in IIM Ahmedabad, so he was my classmate. And from IIM Ahmedabad, he went on to do his PhD in finance, and then he is known world over as a renowned economist. In fact, last year he was slated to get the Nobel Prize in economics, but sometime in his lifetime he is going. He didn't get it, but sometime he is going to get his Nobel Prize. He was the governor of Reserve Bank of India. Uh, Nandan Nilakani, the person who gave us the Aadhaar card, uh, who conceptualized the Aadhaar card, and he was one of the founder members of Infosys, is again an IITian. In fact, the entire founding team of Infosys comes from not from the Tata or a Birla or the Ambani families. They all come from ordinary middle class background, but they have set up a company which is one of the top three IT companies in the country. And what is common among all of them, along with Nandan, is that all of them are from the IITs. So I have given some examples. I can go on and give several examples. Now, who are all these people? Sundar Pichai is a leader in technology. Arvind Kejriwal is a leader in public service. Uh, Raghuram Rajan is a leader in economics. Nandan Nilakani is a leader in business and entrepreneurship. So what IITs produce is not just engineers. They produce leaders. That is the most important thing. If you ask me, they are leadership factories. So you should get into the IITs, not for a B.Tech degree. B.Tech degree you can get any, anywhere. What you get in IITs is this extra edge. In whichever walk of life you chose to be in, you will become a leader there. And how does that happen? And that, that begins with the intensely competitive test called the JEE, where 12 lakh people appear for the test and only 12,000 get selected. So just imagine four years you work with this uh, in, in an intensely competitive atmosphere. You work with this cream of the cream batch. Obviously, with that kind of exposure, later on in, in career and life, Whatever challenges you face, you'll be ready for those challenges. And that is what gives the edge for the IITs. And that is why you should be looking at the IITs very, very seriously. And we are very fortunate. We've got such great institutions in our country. A lot of countries don't have such institutions. We are very fortunate and they are accessible to all of them. We can go on and talk about, I know of several people who've come from very, very, ordinary backgrounds and who have gone on to get into IIT. In fact, uh, I used to go to IIT Madras very often when my son was studying there. And uh, once when I went there, I went into his hostel. His hostel by, was a uh, hostel by name Mandakini. I walked into the office in that hostel and uh, one boy came who freshly joined that particular year. And uh, looking at that boy, I knew that he was from uh, a Telugu state and uh, I asked him where he was from and he told me that he was from a place called Rampa Chodavaram. A lot of you may not know where Rampa Chodavaram is. You will not even, you will not be able to locate it in a map. It's in a place in East Godavari district, not so well known. And another interesting thing about this boy is that he comes from a family of farmers. Forget about IITs, there was not even a single graduate in his family. 
I think the highest education qualification in that family was just about 10 plus. And look at this boy from a place called Rampat Chodawaram. Okay. And I asked him, how did he come to IITs? How did he manage? How did he dream? How did he achieve this dream? And he said, sir, when I was in my ninth class, somebody came to my school and told me one thing, that if you want to be successful in life, then you have to get into the IITs. He, he said a lot of things, but I couldn't remember. The only thing that I remember was that success is equal to getting into IITs. And from that time onwards, I worked and got into the IITs. But just look at this boy from Rampachodavaram, from this kind of a family. Once he passes out from IIT, gets a good job, what kind of a role model he is going to be for his community, for his place, for everybody around him. And that is so great about our country, that we have such great institutions in our midst that a person from remote corners, from a very backward socio-economic community also can dream of getting into IITs and realize their dreams. So if that boy from Rampachodavaram can get into IITs, I think everybody who is accessing my seminar on Zoom from the comfort of their homes, I'm sure you are all eligible, qualified and can get into the IITs if you work strong enough. Okay. Now let's uh, look at this, what it takes to get into IITs. Intelligence, of course, but intelligence is overrated. Uh, you, need to, you don't need to be an Einstein to get into the IITs. Above average intelligence is sufficient to get into IITs. But more important than IITs, uh, more important than intelligence is determination and persistence. Okay, that you need to continue, you need to persist for these two years despite the ups and downs that you're going to face in these two years of your journey. It's going to be tough. I'm not saying it's easy, but uh, if you go through that tough phase, the fruits that you're going to enjoy are very much worth it. Then intellectual stamina. Again, as I told you, IIT has become very competitive. The nature of IIT has changed from subjective to objective. The nature of competition uh, Im uh, implies that, uh, that three hours, four hours of coaching that you used to get earlier is not sufficient. You need to have the stamina to put in consistently over the next two years, 10 to 12 hours every day. That is the kind of work that we expect. No holiday, no Sunday, whatever be it, you need to put in this kind of work. So that stamina you should have. And then confidence, because throughout this two years journey, there'll be a lot of challenges and your confidence will get shaken. So you should have confidence in yourself, confidence in the career path that you've chosen. You need to have that kind of positive attitude towards yourself, towards your studies, towards your career aspirations, towards the institution that you've chosen, towards your lecturers. This positive attitude is something which will propel you into the IITs. Then access to good training and learning resources. It has become very important because uh, uh, IIT, the nature of IIT, uh, the nature of competition implies that, you know, you need to get coached by the best people. You need to, most important thing is you have to use these two years very, very prudently because time management is the key. If you waste this time, if you waste the time doing unnecessary things, doing things which are not important, if you don't get the right kind of guidance, you will lose out on competition. So you should be at an institution where you get the right kind of guidance. Your time is not wasted. That is the most important because time is one resource which we cannot recreate. We can get anything else, but time we cannot recreate. One day lost is lost. One week lost is lost. One month lost is lost. You cannot get back that time. So from the beginning, you should be focused and there should be somebody who can mentor you, who can give you that guidance so that you don't waste your time. And then supportive family and friends. Both are important, family and friends. Now, why do I say family? Because parents have a huge influence, uh, both ways. I come across all kinds of parents. I come, come across parents who are totally indifferent. Parents who say that, okay, now we put this chap in the institution, that the institution will have to take care. That is one set of parents. 
the other set of parents are parents who do micromanagement who actually get into every aspect of the preparation and make life hell for the student in fact uh, a couple of years back uh, after our, our new batch got started one month after the new batch got started i was walking into the office and i saw one mother and child sitting in our front office and crying i was shocked why are they crying so early in the morning so i asked our people to check up why the mother and the child are crying and it turned out that uh, the results for our first weekly test were announced the previous day and uh, this boy was a hostler so he did not do well so the mother came running the next day and both of them were sitting in the front office and crying profusely and uh, the mother thought that that was the end of the career iit aspirations of the child so then i had to call her into my office and i had to tell her that iit exam is a tough exam that uh, even if you get as low as uh, 40% some years in fact this year in uh, 2020 people who got even 35% in the open category got seat in the iits so i said don't expect marks like in your 10th class where you get 98% 10 on 10 etc those kind of things don't happen even if you get a decent 50% the boy got actually 50% in his first weekly test i said he is on the right track he should be getting uh, he 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 he's he's got strong potential so i had to uh, pacify her that way but there are parents because of their over anxiety because of uh, their uh, concern uh, they actually make life hell for the student by getting into a lot of details that kind of over uh, anxiety is not required at the same time extreme indifference is also not required the student uh, the parent needs to provide confidence moral support which the college will not be able to provide that moral support is something which the parent has to take care the rest of it the institution will take care similarly good set of friends because every facet of education not just here later on in engineering also if you have a good peer group good friend circle they will lift you they will rise up they will lift you along with them so a good friend circle is important so these are the things which are important as far as the iit journey is concerned so any other questions on iit uh, whatever on competition or entrance test and all that i will discuss uh, uh, before i discuss those questions let me tell you a few things about nano because when we started there were a lot of questions about nano i will answer all those questions so just hold on to your interest in uh, iits let me just finish about nano and then we will come back to your questions nano and special there are if you see there are two names there what are these two names nano and special were two institutions let's start with special special coaching center was established in 1994 uh, founder is shri uh, venkateshwar rao garu uh who's got a lot of experience in iit coaching and he's an expert physics faculty is one of the best physics faculty in the state today um uh, he is a pioneer of this integrated coaching in 2006 when it started from subjective to objective the integrated coaching became a necessity and uh, he was the first person to think of integrated coaching for iit then the other important thing about uh, special was that they produced extraordinary results from ordinary students uh, they did not conduct any entrance test they just took all the students as they came and from these ordinary students they polished them and uh, made them good iit candidates and uh, the important thing of the uh, track record of uh, special is 69 plus ranks over the years in the top 100 and we will see some of them here you can see jyoti rank 5 all india rank 5 all india rank 11 rank 16 rank 18 rank 28 so numerous these numerous ranks in the over the years in the top 100 that is the speciality of special nano started in 2007 in nallakunta uh the if you remember 2007 was one year after iit got converted from subjective to objective so we came with a new approach to iit and a innovative approach to iit je uh, stress free learning and all of those things and i'll explain that in a short while top class faculty 
Nano never ever compromised on uh, faculty. The best faculty that student deserve, we get them, whatever be the price. So that was our specialty, top class faculty. And then we pioneered usage of technology. Like for example, uh, eight years back itself, we started giving students tablet devices. So all our students carry tablet devices because uh, they get a lot of exposure to online learning as well as online test taking. So if you see from the last uh, four years now, JE Main has gone online, JE Advanced has gone online, almost all engineering tests have gone online. Productivity of the students increases. So we did this eight years back, all right? Then uh, we have a very, very student-friendly approach because a lot of people think that I, uh, IIT coaching means a lot of stress on the students. Contrary to that, we have a stress-free environment. So these are the specialities of Nano. So in 2014, Nano and Special merged and formed one single entity called Nano Special. And we have two centers in Hyderabad, Nallakunta and Dilshuknagar. There are three directors, Sri Sri Rao Garu, uh, Venkateshwar Rao Garu, who is the founder of Special, uh, Vice Universe, that is myself, and uh, Krishna Chaitanya, who is the founder of Nano. So Krishna Chaitanya is also a very noted maths faculty. So these are the three directors and we have two centers. The Nalakunta Center is also a residential center. It has day scholars. We also have hostels for both boys and girls. So Nalakunta is a residential center also, along with having day scholars. So what is so special about us? One is it is founded by professionals. We're not business people. We are academicians. So therefore, our approach to education is a little different compared to a business person. Okay, so our mantra is stress-free learning. Whatever we do, we see that there is not too much of stress on the students. Uh, top class faculty, some best names uh, you will find here in our campus. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel, Nano Academy. If you are watching on our YouTube channel, you are already familiar with, uh, with it. So in the YouTube channel, you have a lot of videos of all these faculty members. Also, once you take our test, we will give you port, will give access to our portal. And in our portal, you have demo lectures of all the leading faculty at Nano. You can have a look at that also. Okay. The other thing as I told you is systematic delivery. Why is systematic delivery important? Systematic teaching important? Because time should not be wasted. The two, hour, the two years the student spends here, every minute is precious. So if it is timed properly, if the entire coaching goes as per a particular plan, then we can ensure that the student doesn't waste a single minute. So we do that through systematic delivery. We have excellent infrastructure and also personal care. Why? Because the directors themselves are available in the centers so there is personal care. The number of students at our campuses is limited. There are 50 students per section. So there is personal care for all of these students. Okay. Now, how do the top class faculty contribute? One is our teaching methodology is based on, on providing conceptual clarity. We do not believe in this rote learning. No butty system as it is called. So every concept is taught thoroughly and then we move on to practice. In fact, that is one of the reasons why 50% of our intake is, comes from CBSE, ICSC. A lot of CBSE, ICSC students prefer Nano for the simple reason that they are also used to this kind of teaching in, at their school level. So for them, it's a natural progression. If they get into a so-called corporate colleges, it will be a culture shock for them because there they are expected to learn things by rote. We are against rote learning. We are more traditional. We cover concepts thoroughly and then we move on to practice. Okay. This will ensure that the fundamentals are strengthened. Doubts clarification is a very important part of our DNA. So doubts are clarified inside the class and outside the class also. Why outside the class? Because students nowadays lack social skills. They're a little hesitant to ask doubts inside the class because they feel a little shy. So we encourage them to ask the outside the class. They go to the cabins on a one-on-one -on -one basis, ask teachers, get their doubts clarified. The idea is by the time the student 
leaves for the day, he should be very clear as to what has been taught so that when he gets, gets back home, he should be in a position to do the assignments that have been given. So doubts clarification, even in the online uh, last nine months, we are going through online classes. We've made fantastic arrangements for these doubts to be clarified. And I'll explain that in a short while. So the, if you have top class faculty, they are in a position to inspire students and provide mentoring. Now that is very important for the students because uh, the student should constantly get feedback as to whether he's on the right track or not. And if he's not on the right track, he should be getting uh, clear direction, clear guidance. And that is something which the faculty can provide. So if they are experienced, like for example, the average experience uh, profile of our faculty is around 20 years. That means that they've seen 20 different versions of IIT over the years, they have seen the trends, they are in a better position to communicate to the students what is important. Like for example, if they take up a particular concept, how can it get tested at the IIT JEE? They can bring that experience to the class and share that with the students. That is how the top class faculty will help in terms of inspiring, also providing mentoring. And the most important thing is they're all full time. Okay, then, uh, Doubts clarification I was, talk, I was talking about. So inside the class, outside the class, in the cabins, this is done. Stress-free learning, as I told you, starting with concept-based, no rote learning, that itself reduces a lot of stress because if you have to learn without understanding, it produces tremendous stress on the student. So less stress because uh, it is conceptual. Then regular doubts clarifying, uh, clarification, planned instruction. So if you, see that the pressure is there distributed over the 365 days in a year, there is less stress on the student. On the other hand, if the pressure is there on particular, during particular time periods, if syllabus is not completed uniformly, syllabus is completed towards the end, there's a lot of pressure on the students. So we'll ensure that there is regular coverage of the syllabus throughout these two years. So continuous interaction and assessment. So this feedback, mechanism is something which is continuous. So the student will be told what is right, what is doing right, what is doing wrong. So that if there are any mistakes, the mistakes are corrected early. So he doesn't have to go through jitters towards the end. Okay, a regular counseling as I told you, and then a student friendly ambience throughout the college. Okay, uh, a lot of parents ask me, what do you do about intermediate? For us, intermediate is also important not neglected, we do not postpone till the end of the year. Uh, we will see that students spend time as required for intermediate. So optimum type, time allocation, we conduct quarterly, half yearly on the basis of intermediate. So quarterly, in fact, we conduct in September itself. So that gives an early warning signal. This is purely based on intermediate syllabus. So in September itself, we will know whether the student has the capability to write theoretical questions because intermediate is all about theory. So in, if student has got a problem, October, November, December, we take care of the student. Such students get special attention. Languages, for example, we start coaching in, in July itself. We don't wait for January, February. Uh, so all of these things are part of our intermediate focus. So infrastructure, AC campus, uh, online classes. Now, even noted Colleges, I find, have not taken the online classes seriously. We started online classes immediately after the intermediate exams in March itself. And uh, March, I think the exams were over by 15th or 16th, and we started our second year coaching 18th onwards, online, immediately. How do we do it? We went through several phases. Initially, we started with uh, YouTube live, but uh, there were obviously certain limitations. Then we went to Zoom for about a month. Again, a lot of limitations in Zoom. Those of you who are uh, watching today on Zoom will know the problems in terms of occasional lag, in terms of uh, blurring of images and a lot of other problems. Then we invested on our own learning platform. So today, from May onwards, we have developed this platform. So today we have our own platform. 
online.nanoeducation.co.in. If you go to this portal, you will find our classes. So we have hired Amazon Web Service for continuous streaming without any difficulty because Amazon AWS servers are supposed to be one of the best for streaming. So we have hired them not just and we have created our own digital studios we have we have you we have invested in digital boards uh, so that student doesn't face any kind of a problem so for continuous interactivity we produce screens uh, near the board so that the students can ask doubts through chat and the faculty while teaching will look at the screen and answer we look at the screen that has been placed and uh, answer the doubts as they come so regular interactivity is ensured in classes. A lot of good colleges also, well noted colleges also have not have ignored or neglected this. The other thing that we have done is uh, we have provided recorded versions of all our classes. So on our portal, you don't not only have live classes, but also recorded version of all the previous classes starting from May, all the previous classes that are there. It's at a cost to us because the bandwidth is expensive. The video files are uh, take a lot of space, but we decided to invest because students sometimes may not get the right uh, connection, net connection, power failures may be there from the student side. So how does, he, well, how does he cope if he misses those classes? So recorded classes are available. So we've done a lot of these things. The other notable thing that we've done is we have not fired any of our faculty members like other colleges. We have retained all of them. And for each faculty member, we've given 20 students to mentor. So the mentor calls each student three times a week to find out how he's doing, to check his attendance, to check his assignments, give him guidance, et cetera, et cetera. Also be in touch with parents. For parents also, this was a one point contact because when, during these live classes, online classes, students were away from us. So we did not get a direct feedback. So we use the mentors for this connection between the college and uh, the students. And we did a number of these things to ensure that the learning was perfect. So all of those things are listed here. Okay. Um, now our junior college is recognized by Telangana State Board of Intermediate Education. Our code is 61377. Uh, we have uh, three modes. But let quickly add that this was pre-corona. So now for the new season, we will look at government guidance and we will see what is allowed based on, because this is a health issue. This is not just academics. We also look at, we, are, we also have to look at what is the uh, guidance from the government in terms of timings, et cetera. So we'll be guided by that and decide for the new season. But pre-corona, we used to have three programs. One is a regular program, 9 a.m. to 6.45, semi-residential, 6.30 a.m. to 8 p.m., and residential, that is hostel. So these were the three programs that we had earlier. So we'll continue to have regular and residential. This semi-residential, we will look at the government's uh, uh, directions, and based on that, we will decide. Okay, so in addition to this, we have regular parent uh, meetings. Earlier, we used to conduct it in college, or in uh, auditoria outside. But for the last nine months, we are having interactions like this through Zoom and through YouTube, where we interact with the parents directly and uh, find out their problems and address those problems. All in all, we have a very student-friendly ambience throughout. Uh, we find happy students because of stress-free learning. And uh, a few questions which uh, most people ask, we have a college uniform. We continue the same school atmosphere in a college because if you see 11th and 12th are part of school itself. Only in a few states like Telangana, we have a separate junior college. But otherwise, students have to go to a school for 11th and 12th. And we need to communicate to students that it is part of the school itself. The best indicator is a uniform. So we have a uniform, no mobile policy. Obviously, we don't allow mobiles in the class. There is printed course material that is provided both for IIT as well as intermediate. There are a few reference books we suggest and Sundays and holidays as usual. Okay. So what about our track record? So this is our track record, IIT JEE, uh, below 100, 29, below 290, overall 1500 plus ranks. 
track record in JE main below 140, below 295, overall 1800 plus. In bits, 600 plus students are in bits over the years. In JE advanced 2020, this uh, picture may not be very clear. Let me tell you our best rank was 317, 419, 529, 550, 754, 933, 1043, 1100, etc., etc. So that was 2020. 2019, our best rank was 133. In uh, 2018, our best rank was 114. In uh, 2017, best rank was 67. That is about JE Advanced. JE went 2020, uh, less than 2000, we got eight ranks. Less than 5000, we got 26. Less than 10,000, we've got 54. Less than 20,000, we got 73. And less than 30,000, we got 90. That means 90 students got seat getting ranks in NITs and IIITs. This is from a student base of 300. So 90 out of 300, that's a, a fairly good number. Approximately every year, around 30% of our students settle in IITs, NITs, BITs, and IIITs. That's a very high percentage. Okay, so this is uh, in 2019, best rank was 174, close to 90 students. 2018, our best rank was 398, and uh, 2017, best rank was 110. Now, we don't lag in intermediate also. If you look at intermediate, the recent ranks in our first year, 465 out of 470, four students got. 464 and higher, 13 students got. 463 and higher, 19 students got. 460 and higher, 49 students got. 450 and higher, 100 students, 107. One third of the batch got more than 450 out of 470. That is intermediate. Similarly, second year also, our performance was good. Similarly, 2019, 2018. The most important thing, and we are very proud of the fact that a lot of girls from uh, Nano are at NITs, IITs, and other places. So IIT Madras, uh, Lakshmi Ramesh, Swapnika IIT Madras, IIT Kharagpur, Kavya, Ravali IIT Kharagpur, um, then Bits, then a lot of NITs, a lot of IIITs. So our girls are doing very well. We have a policy to encourage girls. We give an additional 5% fees concession for girls uh, to encourage more girls. We did this. We were doing this for the last nine years. IITs have realized that girls need to be encouraged four years back and they've started the reservation. It is good that the central government is also thinking on the same lines as we are thinking. They're also encouraging more girls. And today, more and more girls are making use of the reservation that is available. Uh, that is the 20% supernumerary category that they have to get into the IITs and NITs. So for students who, for girl students who want to get into IITs and NITs, this is the best time. All right. So that is about uh, our results. Um, now, the admission process at uh, Nano starts with a diagnostic test. So we are going to conduct a diagnostic test next Sunday. 31st at 10 o'clock. 31st at 10 o'clock. Please remember that. And to register for the diagnosis, this is a free test. To register for the diagnostic test, what all you need to do is go to our uh, website, nanoeducation.co.in. Go to our website. And uh, this is our website, nanoeducation.co.in. Go to our website. And in the website, go to this tab, diagnostic test. And there in the diagnostic test tab, you will have student registration and you will have student login. So first you have to register. Once you register, you will be given a login facility. And Sunday, that is 31st January, 31st Jan at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. you can take our, uh, take our test. This test will be purely based on 10th class syllabus. We're not going to ask IIT questions. 10th class concepts, maths, physics, chemistry, and a few reasoning based. It is multiple choice, single answer, right? It will be for either 60 minutes or 90 minutes. Okay, there are some papers with 60, some papers with 90. So it will be nine, most probably 90 minutes. So that will be the format of the, you don't require any special preparation. If you're thorough with your 10th class, you should be in a position to answer these 
questions. So that is about the diagnostic test. Once the diagnostic test is over, we will call you, we will give you the feedback. We call it a diagnostic test. Please note that it's not an admission test. We want to see how, where you are today and whether you would be in a position to take up this course. And based on that, we will guide you during counseling. We will call you over. We will talk to you. Our counselors will talk to you, give you direction, give you feedback as to how the student has performed and then offer admission. This year, our classes will start most probably from 15th of June. Normally, our classes used to start in May, but this year, because the CBSE exams and most board exams will go over only by the first week of June, the earliest we can start is 15th of June. So we look forward to 15th of June being the start date for the next academic season. So admission, admissions will start immediately after we conduct the diagnostic test. Okay, so that is what I wanted to share with you. So any questions that you have now, you can. Yeah, any questions that you have now, you can either on Zoom chat or you can send a WhatsApp on this number. I will try to answer the questions. Okay, now there are some questions already. Are you going to edit it? What? You uh, just uh, scroll that down. Okay, so I have some questions here. Will Nano focus on BitSat, ICER, NICER for pure sciences? apart from JE mains and advanced. Yes, sir, BitSat is part of our focus. Uh, BitSat is almost like JE main, except that the speed uh, in BitSat is a little higher. Uh, in JE main, it is 75 questions in three hours. BitSat is 150 questions in three hours. So you need to ans answer faster. The pace is important. The questions are slightly easier than JE main. So what we do for BitSat is that in the second year, we conduct what are known as speed booster tests. So to allow the students to develop that speed. Similarly, English and logical reasoning, there are 25 questions on English and logical reasoning. We will cover those two, all right? So uh, BitSat is our focus. A lot of students get into BitSat every year. Uh, ICER and NICER, uh, the, one of the entrance mechanisms for ICER is also through JE Advanced. So if you're prepared for JE Advanced, you're prepared for ICER also. All right. Okay. Does BITS have reservation? No reservation for BITS. For any of these private institutions, there is no reservations. 2,500 seats, all in the open category. Uh, CBSE kids with no IIT foundation, how will, we, how will they be taken care of? Good, very good question, sir, because I get this, I get this doubt very often. Um, in fact, the way we approach to IIT coaching, we do not assume anything. We start from scratch. We start from scratch. We don't expect them to go through foundation. Also, let me tell you about foundation. Foundation, uh, there are two different mechanisms for foundation. One, the traditional foundation mechanism, which used to be there in Nalakunta, which continues to be there in some institutions in Nalakunta, where the eighth class, ninth class, 10th class, maths and science, whichever they are supposed to know, they are taught with a lot of clarity. They are introduced to problem solving on their own. That is a good foundation approach. There is another school where, another school of thought, uh, most notably the co so-called corporate schools, where the foundation takes a different approach, where they are taught 11th class syllabus in 9th class and 12th class syllabus in 10th class and not too many students are able to cope with that. They make a mess of this whole thing. That is not advisable. So irrespective of all this, whether the student has foundation or no foundation, we start from scratch and see that students become thorough. For example, say in physics, because a student who doesn't go through foundation will not know too much of problem solving in physics. So what do we do? In the first one month, we give them small problems in physics, allow them to develop the ability to apply 
so the application part is taught they will be they will be gaining confidence through those small problems and once they gain confidence then we move on to the next level and go to the iit level problems so foundation or lack of foundation no problems uh from june 15 do we have online classes or offline classes online classes only oh, sorry offline classes only so uh, uh hopefully by june 15 this corona pandemic will go uh, go in the sense will be addressed substantially because of the vaccination program we should not be having any problem so we should be starting uh offline classes but the way we see it the way forward is going to be hybrid classes so there will be hybrid classes we are get for hybrid classes because we realize that hybrid classes there is the advantage so we can use the time in the class productively if we also give the students certain video lectures so the way forward from june 15th will be hybrid there will be a lot of offline physical classes there will also be some online classes okay uh can you speak something about mset so mset is a very easy easy exam and a student who's prepared for all of these things should be able to uh, do well uh, in mset uh, our students if they don't get into je advanced or je men iits or nits or bits uh, students land up in uh, the top 10 engineering colleges in the state uh, again mset like bitsac is a speed based test uh, 160 questions to be answered in 3 hours the questions are easy and no negative marking so mset is very easy to handle okay so will nano guide kids about the last date etc in applying yes one great thing about nano is that you have peace of mind once the student is with us we will take care of everything required for the student we will apply for these exams on behalf of you so we will tell you which are the entrance tests our people will also help you in terms of the application process and in most of the cases we apply on behalf of the student so and in in this context let me also tell you that uh, some parents st of students studying in other colleges have to go for tuitions and all that because some aspect or the other is neglected in at nano we are very proud of the fact that our students don't get to go for any kind of tuition whether it is jee or intermediate we take care of the whole thing okay what is the difference between semi residential and day scholar semi residential a little extended period day scholar is only from 9 to 6:45 semi residential is from 7 o'clock in the morning to evening but let me tell you semi residential subject to government clearance uh, depends on how the situation will be in june based on government directions only we will start semi residential otherwise it will be day scholars uh, yes uh, my daughter is studying in icsc can icsc syllabus help in preparation of je and are you getting students of icsc board as i told you 50% of our students come from icsc and cbsc all top icsc schools we have students let me also share with you that my own children my son as well as my daughter are from icsc board and then they have come to intermediate and my as i already told you my son has passed on from iit madras my daughter has passed on from nid warangal absolutely no problem icsc in fact is a fantastic board teaches a original approach the academic rigor has dropped in both ssc as well as cbsc icsc the rigor has still not dropped okay icsc absolutely no problem okay now i want to become a scientist at isro what course i should be taking you should be taking mpc without uh, as i told you without any doubt and uh, aspire to get into isro uh, uh, isro through indian institute of space technology at tiruvananthapuram it is a premier aerospace engineering institute in the country the admission to uh, iast is also through je advance so you are prepared for je advance you are prepared for iast also also all the iits all the premier iit all the uh, first generation iits have aerospace as a specialization if you don't get into iast you can also get into the iits and do aerospace okay uh, 
starting july 21 and targeting 2023 february mains uh, it is around 18 months how will you stick to timeline i mean yeah don't worry it is there every year every year yeah, every year we start in may this year we are starting in july but uh, we have a plan for that for example this year we started in june and uh, our students uh, will be ready for je mail so don't worry about that we have all of that worked out okay uh, yes is there any kind of bus facility yes there is a bus facility on limited routes you can take our bus uh, from ecil route a lot of students in that cbsc schools in and around secunderabad maredpalli alwal ecil all of those schools uh, take that bus we have another bus which comes from uh, uppal so we have two two routes you can check up with our people and uh, we will tell you whether our routes serve where you are is your institution registered for intermediate board sir i shared our college code we are registered with intermediate there there should not be any issue in intermediate absolutely no problem uh, ours is a very old junior college i have also shared the college code with you okay uh, is dilshnar college is residential dilshnar college is not residential it is only day scholar okay is there any uh, separate preparation for sat foreign institutions such as mit and harvard uh, we do not provide separate coaching for sat uh, but uh, subject sat subject sat if you take whatever you prepare for je mail you it is more than adequate for subject sat a number of our students have done well in subject sat on the basis of the coaching that have taken for je mail and the uh, the regular sat is based on english and uh, um, quant which i am sure you should be in a position to prepare on your own okay there are students who have taken sat from uh, uh, sat on their own and are studying in leading institutions such as the carnegie mellon they are, they are doing their undergrad in carnegie mellon now okay so no issue on that i have already answered this question somebody is asking this question whether state or cbse is good for iit so uh, uh iit course or nit whatever if you are interested in engineering you should be going towards the state board because the thorough foundation that we give for jee maths physics and chemistry will be useful in whatever engineering program that you get into maybe at iits maybe at nits maybe at bits maybe at the state level colleges the thorough coaching that you get in through the integrated coaching facility at the state level like in colleges like ours it is going to be helpful so whatever be your option if you are interested in getting into engineering you should go for integrated coaching and in our colleges like ours uh okay so thanks for the session very organized with a lot of clarity thank you very much sir mr ramaswamy um do we use telugu while imparting coaching happens in a lot of coaching centers uh no sir we do not use it uh you can see our demo lectures you can go to our uh, um website online this is our website this is our online dot nano education this is our online learning portal in fact your demo test will also be there in uh, in this site so go to online dot nano education dot co dot in there are demo lectures available you can go through the demo lectures or when your stu when your child is taking the diagnostic test some demo lectures will be available you can see for yourself okay so no telugu how do you deal with students who are not up to the mark sir there is there is nothing like up to the mark etc now these are qualifiers that we give that the student is not up to the mark etc etc so we would not like to give this kind of qualifiers to each of the students we provide the students with the right kind of inputs and 
all the students we have to ensure that the students do above their potential that is what our coaching will ensure okay can i come and meet you as a face to face of course you can definitely you are welcome to come down i would suggest that please encourage your child to write your diagnostic test and then our number is there our college number 9 Double zero, triple zero, double seven, six one. So this is our nine double zero triple zero double seven six one. This is our college number. So you can call this number, ask for an appointment with me. But please take this appointment after your child has written the diagnostic test, so that I have a little more data to counsel you on. Okay. So you are always welcome to come to me. what is the strength per class uh, yes 50 do we segregate students no we do not segregate students we do not segregate it is called shuffling we do not do that okay can you can you send a lot of messages okay is your hostel food hygienic yes of course it is hygienic we are our own cooking facility okay i have already answered this question for a fee structure now fee structure based on the performance in the diagnostic test you will get a scholarship but for our day scholars our fees is 1 lakh 60000 per annum uh, this includes intermediate plus iit coaching based on the performance of the test you will be getting a concession uh, yoga or meditation not included as of now but uh, our experience with corona has taught us a few things going forward we may look at including some of these things as part of our curriculum okay is icsc good enough for je preparation i did not know there was any icsc uh, student here in this particular thing whatever comparison i did for cbse also holds for icsc so icsc like cbse doesn't provide integrated program you should not be looking at isc if you are serious about je you should shift to the state board okay uh residential admission also through the diagnostic test there is a very limited hostel facility so if you are looking for hostel then you need to take your admission fast can you get can you other than mpc the languages that are available sanskrit and english okay online registration for diagnostic test i have already explained how do you register for online just go to uh, nanoeducation.co.in go to our website and then register uh, uh, what are the alternatives for a student who doesn't secure any ranks and there are a number of that is the advantage of engineering there are a number of options there are bits there is manipal institute there is vit there is srm there are triple its there are state level colleges there are a number of options that are available okay go for okay so i think i have taken a lot of time we are already past one and a half hour okay let's see english is compulsory sanskrit is optional but we would prefer sanskrit for a number of reasons once you come and meet us we will tell you why sanskrit is preferred sanskrit or arabic there are two languages which are easy in the case of intermediate without too much of uh, preparation without too much of effort you can score as much as 99% those two languages are arabic and sanskrit so we would encourage students to take these two languages okay yeah so that fees is for one year okay okay so if there are no further questions i had a okay hostel students you have to add 80000 to our regular course you get hostel fees hostel fees is 80000 per annum okay uh, okay so thank you very much uh, i hear a lot of I, i get a lot of thank yous here okay thank you very much for your patience and being with us for more than 90 minutes today i had a really good time interacting with you and uh, the number of questions also shows uh, how much you uh, care about your children uh um, there is a question here uh do you plan to start a branch near gachipoli or madapur not this year uh it was on the cards last year but because of covid we had to postpone so this year also it is doubtful but next year definitely um 
number of lessons appearing uh, for uh, diagnostic test entire 10th class syllabus will be thorough with it that is sufficient um, do you regularly mentor and monitor students yes that is one of our specialties we regularly mentor and uh, uh, monitor students this is a continuous process uh, personal care and attention is the continuous process as i told you uh, the dna our dna is we take average students and ensure that they achieve extraordinary results and that happens because of the constant supervision and guidance they get here so that is uh, there throughout okay so on that note let's uh, end this here thank you very much and i look forward to all of you taking the diagnostic test and coming uh, coming to us and meeting us personally where we can discuss a lot more than what we could discuss in this one and a half hour thank you